How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Data here and welcome back at long last to the Vancouver Canucks franchise mode here on NHL 24, moving into episode number 23, the 2029 draft and off season. Now before we get started on the off season, just wanted to quickly say a huge thank you to everyone who has donated to the channel in the last little bit. I was finally able to make the long awaited purchase for a new chair. I've been sitting on a folding chair for pretty much every video since NHL 20. The, actually the four year anniversary of when I really started making content here on the channel is about this time actually mid-march of 2020 here we are mid-march of 2024 i've been using of the same type of folding chair i've gone through three of them there's none left in my house now the one that i was using most recently i did about two two and a half years on i said listen i gotta get a little bit of support here a little uh, lumbar support come on now so i finally went out and made the purchase so thank you to everyone who has contributed to that whether it be the microphone or the games that we buy or just the chair that makes my life a little bit more uh, comfortable when i'm doing hours and hours of recording it's very much appreciated and I'm excited to be sitting on this right now as I speak so as uh, all the content moving forward will be made on this and I have all of you to thank so thank you very much the old chair straight to the Hall of Fame and going into the Smithsonian with Archie Bunker's chair so uh, last season year number six with the Canucks we were reigning Stanley Cup champions we said hey listen we got to make some necessary changes. JT Miller, Andre Kuzmenko, they're moving out. If you, who's remaining, Patterson, Hughes, and now players taking new roles like Kara Mackey, bring in Dougie Hamilton. If all of you want to try and show us that you can make a push again and you can try and run it back, sure, go for it. But if not, we're going to start selling off and we're going to start looking at a soft rebuild, retool, however you want to call it, whatever it is. But it's not going to be what the previous GMs of Vancouver have done where they're trying to hang on to the last semblance of something. No, we won the cup. We did what we had to do. Now let's look towards the long-term future and not squander it for one or two more runs at the playoffs. So that being said, it was a 37, 36, and 9 season here in Vancouver. We finished 24th in the NHL. Wasn't our best season, absolutely not, but we did sell off in the second half. We had a better record in the second half after selling as we did in the first half. So just classic EA. Elias Pedersen did end just above a point per game. Owen Tippett's first season with us, 60 points. Just a few highlights here. Quinn Hughes, back-to-back -back seasons of points in the 50s. So that is concerning as a typical point per game player. LeCarrie Mackey, 27 goals from him. Very nice. We picked up Josh Norris for Sam Reinhardt. He scored 28 points in 52 games as a Canuck. Dougie Hamilton's one season with us, 47 points in 75 games. Hronick, 45. Caden O'Brien, 22 goals and 37 points from him. We tried to really boost the ice time of these younger players that we're trying to get growth from. So Caden O'Brien played 15.05. Callum Ritchie scored 35 points, averaging 15.35. So part of it is, hey, listen, they're young, they're low overalls. But at the same time, they're 24, they're 23. They got to be seeing some growth. For having given them a lot of ice time, especially in the second half, we would have wanted to see a little bit more after we moved out Stone, Susie, Ristolainen, Hyman, everybody else. You know, it was their time to kind of show something and you know they did but it wasn't enough to make us say like your locks for the top six next season you know what I'm saying? But Cole's in 29. Goldman's rookie season, 25 points. He was averaging 12.02. Hannafin, 25. Zuccarello, yeah, we had Zuccarello as a, 14, a 13th forward, excuse me. We brought in Quinton Mussey around the deadline as well. As, as we were selling off, we found that he was being buried by the Sharks in their AHL system, not given much of a chance in the NHL. We brought him to the NHL. We played him in 37 games, almost half a season. Four goals, nine assists, 13 points, a plus nine while averaging 13.52 of ice time. So close to 14 minutes a night and kind of average averaging like what a 30 point season so eh Quinton Musty I don't know McIsaac uh, Akuratu Akuratu's brother came in for a little bit as well goaltending Hunter Jones did quite well uh, considering the circumstances 35 29 and 8 was his record with two shutouts we didn't have auto goalie rotate turned off it was still turned on he appeared in 74 games Casey to Smith had a tough go of it 2 9 and 1 8 76 save percentage he has been our savior in so many different instances throughout this series in both the regular season and the postseason so it will be sad to say goodbye to him I'm sorry the numbers got you know uh, you know, messed up a little bit by this last season, but there's definitely no blame to Casey to Smith. We love him and we thank him for everything he's done for us. We'll likely be moving on from him though at the uh, tw well once July 1st hits. So there's a quick recap on last season. It was understood that hey, we might not be super competitive, and you know what? In the end, we weren't, and that is okay. We won the Stanley Cup in 2028. We won with the core that we were brought in to win with. Now it's time to refresh the team a little bit and make sure we're ready for long-term success. 
So moving into this offseason, we definitely want to be thinking of who could be a good fit for us in our top six. If it's not going to be one of those prospects like O'Brien, like uh, Richie, or any of our other guys who aren't quite growing or growing yet, like I'm thinking uh, Dallas Johnston, I'm thinking who else? Niskala here, 78 overall, medium top six. Could he get into our top nine next season? Second round pick in 2027. Niskala could be someone. Um, then there's even, uh, where's Brown? Brown, here he is. Yeah, he's right in front of me. Cody Brown, 76 overall. You got Dominguez, 71 overall. So there are players coming. Now, the Calvary's on its way in a couple of years' time, but we want to make sure that we're not just, you know, continually in that bottom feeder state for all those years. We still have the primes of Pedersen and Hughes, and even, you know, a a few good years, I would say, for guys like um, like Hronik, like Ratu. Definitely, these are guys who are still young enough to give us good chances. So I'm not saying we go out and make a big trade to get a top six player, but if there were to be one in free agency, we have the money, we have the roster spots, or maybe even someone in the draft. As heading into this draft, we have the 10th overall selection, and we are definitely considering a trade up. If we're to use some of our you know, young guys we're not using, Dougie Hamilton, we do have a boatload of picks from selling off with Stone, Hyman, Susie, Ristolainen, etc. So we can definitely consider a move into the top three, top five, something like that. At 10th, we would be slated to get this guy, René Fissi, who wouldn't be bad at all medium top six 17 years old one year away that would be great there's some other interesting names in the first round as well but if we could really move up for a top five pick and get one of those guys who would be locked into our top six like within one or two seasons a future medium elite guy who's going to be a pillar for this franchise into the far distant future that would be great because as good as Le Karamaki is as good as Niskala might be I'm not quite sure just yet if they are actual cornerstones come five six seven eight plus years from now one of these top five guys could be that especially if a team wants to trade their pick so i'm especially looking at ned bus i'm especially looking at frederick lundquist and even rick neal first overall would probably be hard to swing unless they want to move it that's pretty rare but i'd love to look at getting bus lundquist or neal in this top five Bus and Lundqvist being snipers, Neil being a playmaker. You know, they offer their own things. They seem to simulate quite well. They are NHL ready with A pluses in these attributes. So that would be great if we can swing it at the draft. So there's your big recap on year number six and how where we kind of are as a franchise. Now headed into this offseason, we got to be thinking, how are we using these picks? How are we drafting? How are we trading? Who's coming back next year? A lot to consider. And that's where the assistant general managers came in. So the first comment that I want to start with comes from Pat, who said, Great video as always, Dana. Thank you, my friend. Love the moves you made to restock the covers, as last episode was titled, Everything Must Go and Everything Went. I'm sure others will have draft ideas. I just hope you wait until preseason before moving any of the young NHL players. One or more could have nice progression. Great stuff as always. So that's a very good point. As much as we're saying, oh, we're tired of Richie O'Brien, these guys not growing, we could see off-season growth. This is pretty much the last chance. This summer is their last chance to impress us. So if I'm looking at Caden O'Brien, he has grown from an 81 to an 82. That's a good sign. Musty at an 81 at 23, who hasn't budged at all. That's a bit more questionable. Same for Richie, who's now 24. He's been given his ice time. He's been given his opportunities. Richie's played some decent minutes in his NHL career so far. Last season, playing 1046, he scored 10 less points. Playing five more minutes a night on average, he only scored 10 more points. So is 10 points a lot for 82 games at five more minutes? I don't know, maybe I'm being unfair, but I can't say I'm super impressed with Callum Ritchie. Part of it is his overall holding him back, but if that's the case, well then let's trade him. But Pat raises a good point. If we don't need to trade many or even any of them before we get a chance to see offseason growth, let's try and do that. And then we can make bigger decisions on, okay, we gave you the offseason. It didn't work out. We trade you from the beginning of the preseason, which would be what we talk about at the end of this episode leading into the next episode. So good points, Pat. Level-headed. Thank you very much. Now, a big name that a lot of the other assistant general managers were mentioning in the last one, because I looked at the pending free agents, was the name of Miro Heiskanen. If we look at the potential UFAs in free agency here that could be there on July 1st, we see Miro Heiskanen leading the, the free agent pool as a 91 overall. Now, the thing is, I did do a little bit of research, and the Dallas Stars have a ton of money. So in Rowan's comment, Rowan had said, Trust the process, Vancouver. GM Data is here to bring you back to glory. 
I believe we should improve Dougie Hamilton. Although hoping Miro Heiskanen falls to free agency, you know, why not just go out and acquire him on draft night? So the reason why I would say we're not going to be doing that right now, unless he drops to free agency, we won't make a run at Miro Heiskanen because Dallas has a ton of money to resign him. I think they have something like 20, 25 million cap space right now. So to trade for him on draft night, it would be a bit too cheese. However, Bouchard, Nugent Hopkins, these guys in the Oilers, they're pretty strapped for cash right now. Same for Keandre Miller over on the New York Rangers. So if we were to think about trading for the rights of certain players, it would be for players who come from teams that have tough cap situations and they would likely be going to free agency and we would actually just be getting a jump on getting their rights, which happens very often in the real world. Rowan continues to say, I also think Richie's window is getting slimmer. Yeah, a lot of people were saying that. With the growth of O'Brien, I think it pushes Richie out of a spot in the top nine. The lines going into next season in a perfect world would be Ratu, Pedersen, Tippett on the first line, O'Brien, Norris, Lakaramaki on the second, then Musty, Goldman, Colson on the third, and depth guys for the fourth. On defense, again, in a perfect world, Hughes, Heiskanen. Maybe take out Heiskanen and put Bouchard instead. Second pair, Hannafin, Hronik. Third pair, McIsaac, and depth. Goaltending, you get Hunter Jones and a backup. Great video data. The NHL 24 sim took away a chance of having a dynasty north of the border, but we'll get there, Ron. We'll get there. As you mentioned, it was a happy Saturday seeing an early notification. Looking forward to the next. Go Nux. Thank you for the comment. Moving to Gavin's comment now. Gavin said, smart to go the retool route, even if the draft class is weak. Obviously, go for the low top sixes, a medium league goalie, etc. All those things we'll want to target. But I think the time is now to make a game-breaking move. This was what I was talking about for the first line. Let's look at Elias Pettersson and Quinn Hughes, two high overall, highly paid leaders who have not lived up to expectations in terms of production. I think this is less of an individual problem and more of an issue of having to carry their team on their backs and create the offense. If you really analyze it, the best player that Pettersson has had on his line was an 88 overall Ratu for that one season and occasionally JT Miller when he was here. No wonder he can't get above point per game. I know I've said it a lot, but this team needs another elite forward. The Islanders will probably be willing to move second overall, so maybe Dougie Hamilton and the 10th overall pick could interest them. Buss, Samalainen, Lungfist, Neal, all those guys could be great fits on the first line as soon as next season. If not, then Fissette looks like a steal at 10th. So we don't need to trade out Pedersen and Hughes. We could just look to complement them at the draft. That's the benefit of having the 10th overall pick to play with. I don't think the retool is over, but the light at the end of the tunnel is starting to shine. I don't know if pushing for playoffs next year is the move, but you never know. It was also great to see Mohamed Shen improve to medium elite. He was low elite, now he's medium elite after the long year in Vancouver. Great video data and thanks for the content. It always makes my day better when I get the new video notification. Also, can't wait for the Data 782 Hall of Fame induction class. That one just came out. Make sure to check out the video. It's going to be in the top right card right now. Go Nux and see you in the next one. Gavin, thank you so very much for the kind words. It makes my day better to see a comment like that. So thank you for warming my heart. And again, make sure you check out the Data 782 Hall of Fame. Our second induction class just went live about a week, week and a half ago. And that includes some of our legends from all the way from NHL 18 to 23. Shifting gears now to the coaching in the offseason, moving over to Wild Broncos comment. Bronco said, normally I'd stay far away from an A-minus head coach, especially this far in. That's what Ryan Suter is. But after how the team played down the stretch, Suter at least deserves a chance to take the reins. But I'd hire an A or A-plus coach with good fit as associate coach and then use them as plan B. I would definitely also target Quint late in the first round. I'd be tempted to try and move up to get Lundquist though. Not only is he a gem, but the Canucks do have a history with drafting highly ranked Swedish forwards. The Sedin twins, at least Pedersen, just saying. That's very well said, Bronco, on both the draft thoughts and the coaching So thoughts. if we could go out there and get Lundqvist, I think that would be great for the storyline. When it comes to our coaching, we have Ronick as an A-rated associate coach, but I don't think his fit is very good. So if we could fire Ronick, or even maybe just keep him as assistant coach, but if we could just get another A or A-plus rated coach in as associate, as a backup plan to Ryan Suter, who's going to be our guy at least moving into next season. Funny to think, 45-year-old Ryan Suter, head coach of the Vancouver Canucks, he he went 22, 15, and 6 in that second half there, going to show that we had a 58.1 win percentage when we were trying to tank. So Ryan Suter will get a chance next season, but our plan B should be someone that has a good fit, and we'll see who that might be once July 1st hits, and we're able to see the staff free agency pool.
And as is becoming the normal, go ahead and finish off with Cheating Heel, who leaves a ton of fantastic suggestions once again. As always, read in depth and replied to thoroughly. But I just want to highlight the end of the comment that says, In a perfect draft world, we would get the top a top four pick to draft Lungfist and have the Flying Swedes as first line. Lungfist, Pedersen, and LeCaramacchi. If we can get that pick without trading our own first at 10th overall, we can draft someone like Albert or Fisset. I'd go with the D-man if available, and if we had already drafted a forward in the top five. Both both look like they could have X factors, so I'd be okay with either. We probably need to keep some picks to target guys like Zubov, meaning the goalie later on, some other prospects who I pinned. We could also hope to get at least one of Heiskanen or Bouchard on the free agent market. If we can get both, even better. Not sure how he simulates, but maybe look at Shveshkov, who could be an option. Perfetti, Evangelista, a few other guys who might be in unrestricted free agency. We can turn things around in a single offseason if the stars align and some players drop to free agency. Let's be bold out here and do what's necessary to get back to the top. We've done a lot of changes last offseason and some prior to the deadline. Now is not the time to stop. Let's complete the retool and put it behind us. Go Nux. Thank you, my dear friend. That is fantastic. And we are going to implement as much as we can into those into our off season right now. I went ahead and, and pretty much wrote down every draft pick who I'd want to target in a perfect world. I think it's 10 or 11 guys in a perfect world again. We're not going to be, I don't think we'll be drafting 10 or 11 players, but definitely, uh, hopefully one, if not two million elite goalies, a few of these late low elite kind of guys. We do have some guys we'll want to target later in the draft. Draft, even guys who are somewhere in the 30s, 50s. But definitely when it comes to the top, top guys, we want to see if we can make a push for a top five pick. And you know what? I, I, I said Bus or Lundqvist or Neil. It would probably be Lundqvist. He's a gem. He's a flying Swede to add to Pedersen and Lekaramaki on that top line. And he fits in perfectly as a left winger. A-plus shooting in an A-plus league. NHL ready, similar to Bobby Hall, hopefully just in his play style. So Lundqvist would probably be the target. Now the question is, the Islanders who won the draft lottery and they jumped from 12 to 2 or one of the draft lotteries would they want to trade the pick maybe at 3 maybe at 4 draft time ladies and gentlemen 2029 offseason starts now let's do it on the trading block more it's cider just notice that at the bottom uh so no none of the top woo so none of the top nine picks want to be traded but if i have to go from what makes most sense story-wise it would probably be the islanders who jumped from 12 to 2 what's their status they are sellers but they have a very good team um, I don't know, would they want to sell all their veterans or would they want to get another player like a Dougie Hamilton in to make another run? They do want to trade defense though. They have one, two, three, four, five, six. Would they want to take in a Dougie Hamilton when they already have Pelik, Romanov on the block expiring, even Pelik on the block? Yeah, maybe not. Maybe Vegas at three would work better. But I would prefer to explore the Islanders first. They're in the Eastern Conference. Let's see if they're even interested once you throw some value their way. If I throw you pick number 10... You don't want Dougie Hamilton, eh? No, you don't want Dougie Hamilton. That hurts the case. But let's just throw a minute for now. Maybe them getting Dougie Hamilton makes them into buyers. Like once he's acquired, their status would change. So 10 and Dougie for number two. Yeah, we're not even getting close on that one. We have a bunch of picks this year. I think they have four thirds and five this year and five thirds next year. So nine thirds in the next two drafts. So just for example, if I throw you a third right here, I don't want to overpay just yet. But yeah, I don't think we're very close uh at all i think another third wouldn't get it close either i'll send you back another third yeah it doesn't mean our block needs all that well so uh, the value is not that much in our favor but it is definitely on our side if i throw in a rookie i don't think it's gonna accept it so i'm not scared to do an experiment here if i threw in like uh like a quinton musty here would you do you want quinton musty you do so if i just threw in a quinton musty here that would still be, yeah, isn't very interesting, not there whatsoever. So this wouldn't happen. This wouldn't this wouldn't be able to go through. So if I go over to Vegas now instead, I don't like trading within the, the division, but you know, one year of, and they want all these pieces. Ooh, one year of Dougie Hamilton on a division rival versus we get a, a, a potential pillar on this team. And although Vegas says that they're sellers, they have a lot of players signed on, it looks like. So if I want the third overall pick from Vegas, Let's go back to, I'll give you Dougie Hamilton and a 10th overall. Would this interest you, Vegas? Not quite. The value is not really there. We're about to get kicked out anyway. So just one last trade before the game boots us because the pick's about to happen. If I add pick number 90 from the Sharks, value's not there. Okay. 
So let's back out here and let Seattle, not the Sharks, let's let Seattle make their first pick here. The Kraken take Salmalainen, Salmalainen, uh, 82 overall, three and a half star shooting playmaker with 88 passing. Very good. First overall pick, a gem. So what can I throw in here? Maybe a late first at 51. Oh, we have a player we want at 52. I'm looking at the, I've wrote down the players, all the, the draft spots, the players that we would want. We want guys at 19, 36, 52. But it, from 52 to 89, it jumps. So my picks in the 70s here, like I could, I could move two picks in the mid 70s. I could do that because it jumps from guys we want, jump from 52 to 89. So we could move two thirds. 73, 75, and 10, and one more year of Dougie Hamilton. That might be even too much. I don't know. Am I going crazy here? Can I take a sixth round pick back just to make sure here? Rejected, okay. Straight up, still rejected. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, could I add a third? We have five thirds next year. I will add a third from Montreal here. So three thirds. I know it's a lot of value, but think about the player we're getting back. A potential cornerstone for years to come. Another third round pick, still not there, eh? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but I'm going to definitely give it a try here. What if we try 50% retention for one more year? We'll have the salary to make it happen. One year of salary retention? No. All right, let's see what the Islanders take at two. This could change things. Who do the Islanders take at two? They take Bus. Interesting. Bus was medium lead 81 overall with five-star shooting. Wow. Okay, one last push for the third overall pick now. Oh, well, you know what? I'm going to make a last... I'm, hold on. I'm making a last second change here. I don't think that third is working out. Let's try to trade for four and then trade up for three. I know actually, you know, all this time Lundqvist is, is ranked fourth. So it could be that he goes at four. We could get him at four with this pick from Dallas. But I don't know if I want to chance it for like a, for, a, for you know, our first line left wing pillar of the future potentially. So Dallas, if I give you pick number 10, uh, you don't want Dougie Hamilton. I'll give you pick number 10. Who can I throw in? Maybe I throw in one of these guys. Musty. Can I give you 10 and Musty to trade up to four? I don't want to move Musty, really. Uh, just yet, I mean. I just gave a whole spiel. About, I don't want to move the young guys, but maybe just moving one of them I can excuse with a sixth and a seventh. What do you say here, Dallas? Doesn't matter particularly well. Okay, okay. You win. You win. Third round pick next year. You win. Third round pick next year. Um, yeah, let's just do it. Third round pick next year. With a couple of sevenths this year. Trade accepted. Great. Okay. Trade accepted. Thank you. We have the fourth overall pick now. Big news. Now, let's jump over to Vegas. I know we needed to use some of those sevenths, but we'll get more sevenths. Don't worry about it. So now pick four and Dougie Hamilton. Sorry, Quinton Musty. Goodbye as well. Pick number four and Dougie Hamilton to Vegas for pick number three. Value's too far off, but it should be easier to get it done now. Should be a little easier. We said we could move the picks in the 70s. I'll give you 75. Value's too far off. I was willing to give you 73. I'll give you 73. A bit low for us. Hold on. Come on. Yeah, we should have the time. We should have enough time to get this done. And we'll dip into... I'll even give you one of our many thirds next year. No, I don't want to do that. Nah. I want our late picks this year, though. Okay, yes. I will dip into another third next year. I'll give you Chicago's third next year. And I want to take back a fourth and a sixth next year. What do you say in 2030? Value's too far off. I just take back a fourth. Still a bit low. I don't want to play too much, but I am interested in seeing how far I can push it. Sixth and a seventh. Value's too far off. Just a sixth. Value just a touch. <laughs> can we do just a seventh? Even a seventh this year, because I want to get those late guys. Seventh this year, a bit low. Okay, Vegas, you win. Trade accepted. Let's go. Thank you, Vegas. Quick timeout here. Quick, quick, quick timeout. Whew. Wow. Okay. So we trade out a bunch of some thirds and mid round picks, essentially some of the value that we got back for selling at the end of last season. It was more value that I wanted to give up. But if you're going to tell me that Lundqvist is an 80 or 81 overall guy with five star shooting, that would be worth it in my mind. So we say goodbye to Dougie Hamilton. Thank you for your one year spending in Vancouver. We brought you in hoping that you could try and be a part of another push. But unfortunately, it didn't quite work out. That's okay. Vegas is going to love having you, and we're going to have to play against you a little bit as well. So, you know, I know we're not super tied to you, but we will not, you know, it'll hurt to play against you a little bit. 47 points in his one season with us. Thank you for your service, Ducky Hamilton. Quinton Musty, I wish you the very best in Dallas. I'm sorry that you couldn't stick around with us. I promise I will do my very, very best, not move any more of the young guys at the draft. Musty was the one guy I was probably the lowest on because of how busy the wings are. I'm very low at this point on Richie as well, but he is a centerman, which is what we need. The wings are pretty crowded. Musty, I wish you the best in Dallas. Hopefully you get some NHL time there. 
13 points in 37 games, something like a 30-ish point pace. Hopefully you can do the same, if not more, with Dallas, and we'll see what happens in the future of your career. But with that being said, now we're going to go to the third overall selection. And the decision was made easy for us. Yes, there's Dansk, who could be a medium lead right D here. Actually, that would be really good. But I think we're going to be solid with Hughes, Hronik, maybe Bouchard, who we can trade for. Uh, we have Boudillon joining the system soon. I, I wouldn't mind another defenseman, but we need a big offensive force on that first line. Lundqvist is only 17 as well. If he could be 80 or 81 overall at 17 with like five-star shooting, which I'm sure he has with the A+, plus, that would really be best case scenario. So with the third overall selection now, we went through a lot of pain. We got the 10th overall pick. We moved value to move up to third. We went through all this pain. It now all comes down to this. Let's head up to the podium. Good evening, everyone. With the third overall selection in the 2029 NHL Entry Draft, the Vancouver Canucks are proud to select from Lulia of the SHL, Frederick Lundqvist. Welcome to uh, Vancouver Bell USA. 82 overall? Okay. Frederick? Frederick? 82 overall at 17? Okay. That's even better than Bus. That's the same as Samalainen even. Frederick Lundqvist, 82 overall, medium elite with five-star shooting at 17 years old. Okay, Frederick, I see you. Four-star skating as well, 86 offensive awareness. Work on the physical and the defense a little bit, the senses, the poise. But okay. Whoa. Okay, if I knew Lundqvist was, was who he is, I would have had even, I would have traded even more probably. To get Lundqvist in there, he's probably top six next season with a little bit of growth. Maybe he's already on the first line. Frederick Lundqvist, welcome to Vancouver. I'm sure he's heard a lot from Pedersen, from LeCaramacchi. Wow. Wow. Okay. And then Vegas with the fourth overall pick. They We did them a favor. They get a defenseman. They need defense on their team. So everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. Whew. Okay. So now our next pick comes at number 41. We've got to come down from Lundqvist there for a second. Our next pick's at 41, but we are interested in a few players here. If he said 10, we probably couldn't get if he said at this point now. But there is uh, Fedoric at 19, who's a medium elite centerman. Playmaker, three years away, yeah. Pete Fedoric. Uh, Federic, like, well, if Todd Fedoric was that, so I guess Pete Fedoric. Uh, that would be nice. Also at 36, we see uh, Johansson or Johansson. There's also Quint, who's a gem top 4D, 17 years old, NHL ready. Franklin Quint, he would really be interesting as well, I gotta say. Franklin Quint, as much as he might not grow, he could be a long term third pair guy, probably like a 77 overall, but at 17, Franklin Quint could be helpful for the defense. The left side's already a little busy. Franklin, even Johansson though. Kim Johansson, another Swede, three years away, medium top six gem. We could probably afford to pass on the medium top six because there'll be more uh, later on. NHL ready 17 year old medium top 4D gem from Peterborough. That's very interesting. There'll be a late first round pick. Anybody want to trade a late first? Maybe 29 from Buffalo? Maybe 29. Because if we are good with passing on Johnson at 36, uh, at 41, we might, we might want the guy at 52. So I could trade 51. I'll use 41 to draft the guy that we want at 52. So I'll trade 51. Unless we chance it and hopefully we can get the guy at 52 who we want at 51. We could do that. We could chance it. So we could trade 41. 169 I think we could afford to move. I'm looking at my rankings here. 41 and 169 for 29, which you want to trade Buffalo. You're a bit off in value. I mean, in the real world NHL this year, they were trading picks in like 2027, three years away. So if I give you a 2031 seventh in a couple of years from now, trade accepted. Okay, I can do that to move up for an NHL ready defenseman. Thank you very much. So going to pick 29. Let's just quickly see the draft that was so far. Uh, Lungfist. Neil was 78 overall medium elite. Buke Boom, the Romanian. Hughes Albert was medium top four D73 overall. At how old? He was 18, Ian Albert. Fisa actually went to pick number nine. So if we kept pick number 10, we wouldn't have even gotten Fisa. But Lockhart was a good pick at 77 overall, medium top six. Sniper with four and a half star shooting. Whoa, Keegan Lockhart. So that's a great pick for Dallas. Uh, some decent overalls here as I continue to move down. Uh, Kirill Malkin, Fedoric was medium elite 62 overall. Uh, some top sixes, some top nines. Ouch. Ooh, a few top nines. Ouch. At 29, we'll go ahead and take this defenseman here from the Peterborough Peets. Let's head up to the podium.
With the 29th overall selection in the 2029 NHL Entry Draft, the Vancouver Canucks are proud to select from the Peterborough Peets, Franklin Quint. Welcome to Team Bellow. You are... Where's 76 overall? Okay. Okay. I can do that. I was looking at the Minnesota pick saying, where's our pick? It was right here. 76 overall for Franklin Quint. For 17, that's fine. Hopefully, he's a third-pairing guy a couple seasons from now. All I want to see from Franklin Quint is, please, growth. If, if this guy doesn't grow, I think I'm locking in like a personal philosophy forever. NHL-ready defensemen at the end of the first round just never grow. We've been burned a few times before. Franklin Quint is the last chance. Three-star defense, that's good. Well-rounded player, four and a half star, a three and a half star skating. Good. Franklin Quint, welcome to Vancouver. Our next pick's at 51. So do we chance it and get up and get the guy we want at 52? I think we got to do it because already I want to trade for more picks. I don't want to trade away other deep picks. Yeah. Oh, oh doubt he was medium elite 65. Oh my goodness, but we should still get our goalie here, right? Uh yeah, Baikov. Oh my goodness. Okay, so behind the scenes in the Discord server before recording this episode. Oh my goodness, I had asked. There's a bunch of medium elite goalies in the second uh, yeah, somewhere in the second round. Beach is medium elite, Baikov's medium elite, but Dowdy is medium backup, three bars uh, unlocked. We didn't have him fully scouted. For some reason, our scouts didn't get him fully scouted. Three bars, medium backup. So I said, ah, it looks like, it says he's three years away, and it says that he has a B minus for athletic and stuff like that. That could be a sign that he's actually a higher overall with higher potential. In the Discord server, we kind of said, eh, it's possible, or he could just be a fringe starter, and then we lost a pick when there's a bunch of medium leads going. So Dowdy was a 65. The scouts really killed me on that one. Oh, Dowdy, Dowdy, Dowdy. It was a 65 medium lead. That would have been great. We'll get Baikov, but he's five years away. The good news is he's a gem. So you might be saying, well, why are you wasting a pick on a medium lead right now when you could get a medium lead later in Zubov? The thing is, Zubov is two years older and also five years away. Baikov is two years younger, five years away as well, but also a gem which could help for a bit of an accelerated growth path here. So Jacob Baikov, Jakob Baikov, the Ukrainian goaltender. Welcome to the organization, my friend. Medium elite, let's get him in here. I'm sure he's like 48 overall, right? There he is, 48 overall Baikov, but medium elite and 18, which is very different than medium elite and 20. So thanks, Baikov. Oh, we wouldn't have taken Dowdy. I don't, like, I think we were decided that we weren't gonna take him, but that really hurts to see. Beach was 58, but he's a year older. Medium league, but a year older. So I'm content with getting Baikov there as a medium league goaltender. The next guy we want is at 89. So we could sim to 70. We could trade down and try to get another 7th in there. I think that's probably what I'll do. The next guy I want is at 89. So if I trade to, if I go to 70, and let's say let's trade for like 86 from the Avalanche. Why not? Let's trade down from 70 to 86. Oh, actually, I could even send you pick 90. I don't need pick 90, but I need some more late picks, because after this, I have three, I have like six other guys that I want here, and I have one, two, three, I have four other picks. So I'll trade you 70 and 90, I'll take 86, here you go, this is exactly what I want to see, and I'll take back, whatever, I'll take back two sixths and a seventh, how about that? Can I do that from you, Colorado? Okay, thank you very much! That's exactly what I want to do. So now I can take the guy that I want, who was slated to go 89th at 86th, then I can take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, my last six guys with those seven picks, even trade one for next year. Bada bing, bada boom. The Avalanche take, Girardi, medium top 60. So going to pick 86 now. The guy that I wanted here was Alto. Yes, Alto, low top six sniper gem, 17 years old, three years away, which is good for this late in the draft as well. A minus shooting. I was really impressed by Anti Alto. So Alto, another Finn on the team in our organizations between Starfleet on on Thursday nights in Vancouver. He has a low top six forward at 64 overall. Love to see it. Ah, and the shooting was only two and a half stars. But that's okay with me at 17 as a sniper. I'm sure he can get some growth in there. Good starting attributes for his grade, for his age, and that's a solid overall. We've seen a lot of players with lower overalls become more. So 64, we'll take it. Next pick is at 111. The next player we want is at 124. Sorry I'm not showing you the class every time, but I've already done a lot of the pre-scouting here. And it's a weaker draft class as well, so we're not passing on anyone too special. As you see, medium top nine forwards, medium seventh Ds, medium top six Ds, nothing really crazy. But Dylan Montoya could be a guy here from the Prince George Cougars. We could trade down a little bit though. Let's see if we can keep playing that game. Ottawa, how about I give you 111 and 220? and you give me 120, 
and then you throw in a sixth next year. So a fourth and a seventh for a fourth and a sixth next year. Does that change the value for you? Okay, not bad. A fourth and seven for a fourth and a sixth? Yeah, I will definitely do that. We just upgraded a seventh this year for a sixth next year. Oof, okay. That's called business, baby. Show biz, baby. Let's go ahead and take Montoya now. Medium top six, Dylan Montoya. 19 years old, three years away. We'll take him from the Prince George Cougars. 67 overall, medium top six. Yeah, I will take that every single time. Thank you very much, Dylan. Let's move on. Next pick at 137. The guy we want is at 161. So again, we could probably think about trading down just to show you the draft class so that I'm not just pulling the wool over your eyes. Again, nothing interesting at all. Could be a low top 4D right here, uh, Yulkanen, six foot five, but that's a guy who five, who's also five years away. We could do that. I mean, I guess we could. Just throw another defenseman. Is he a left-handed defenseman? We have, we have a lot on the left, eh? We have a lot on the left. Mm, Matty Yulkanen, six foot five. He's also 20. He's 20 and five years away. No, no, no. 20 and five years away. That's where I draw the line. So the next guy we want is Zubov at 161. So again, we're going to do some business here. We're going to do some fine business. Minnesota, I'll give you 137 and 154 to get 158 because the guy we want is at 161. And we'll see what can we take back next season. So I'm giving you a two fifths. Can I get a fifth and a fourth next year? You upgrade, I upgrade a fifth for a fourth. <laughs> Okay! The draft is always so hard. To, draft picks are always like so difficult to make trades with. The AI is always so unreasonable. So I'm shocked to be seeing anything that makes sense for us. So we seem to pick 158 now. We'll go ahead and take that mini league goaltender. He is 20 years old, which isn't as ideal, but a big six foot five body. As Dan in the Discord server said, let's go for Zubov. There will be mania in Lithuania when he raises the cup. Could not have said it any better. Yuri Zubov, welcome, the Lithuanian legend. Let's get him in here. 58 overall, medium lead. Not bad, actually. Sometimes there are 20 year olds who are in the low 50s. I'll take the high 50s. It's still not uh, ideal. He had some decent numbers in the limited ice time there. Okay, Yuri Zubov, welcome. Next guy we want would be at 191, so it could be a bit tight at 188. Scrolling to see who that guy was again. Let me get a quick refresher. Uh, Mimi Kravchenko. Yeah, we definitely want Kravchenko at 191. Actually, yeah, he's, he's going at 191. And our next pick is when? 188? Now we should get Kravchenko. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, perfect. Okay, Kravchenko, welcome, buddy, at 188. Medium you know, for once, I really planned well, and it's paying off. I never go into the draft blind, but I never write down the ranks of who I want and really make sure everything is perfectly calculated. So, Russell and Kravchenko, right defenseman, that's what we want to see. Good size at six foot four, a gem as well. Low elite potential, he's at 49 overall, no problem, but great to get that potential and another gem into our system. Ruslan Kravchenko, welcome. Now, next guy we want, uh, pick one. So now it's pretty much just the last guys we want. If we look at the draft class, I don't think there's anybody else who we would go after who wasn't pinned. If I sort by potential, two bar medium elite would be the only guy, maybe a goalie, but no one else super interesting who isn't already watch listed, I believe, or pinned. So a low top six forward and two low top four D. Uh, that would just be three more picks. So we could just trade for like three sevenths at this point with those two sixths. So if there was a team that had three sevenths, that would be great. But we'll use our two sixths to trade for three sevenths plus for picks next season. Maybe we use some of these picks as well to get a higher pick as well next year. I don't know. Let me see what I can do. And you know what? Anaheim has exactly that. So perfect. Didn't have to look too far. Anaheim, two sixths for two sevenths. What can I get back for that? Can I get a fourth for next season? I don't know. Maybe something like that. I'll reject it. Could I give you the sixth that I just got from Ottawa? Or even, yeah, can I get a, the sixth I just got from Ottawa? Can I upgrade that to a fourth? Can I do that? Okay, great. So essentially, for giving two sixths for two sevenths, I get to upgrade a sixth to a fourth for next season. No problem with that. So with our last picks now, we're gonna go ahead and draft the guys that we had pinned. Or actually, did I need to keep, I think I had to keep one. I think I traded away one too many. I think I did, oh, that's okay, we'll just get one back. We'll start with Rich Vallette, low top six, five years away, of course, but now it's just all for potential. If they grow, that's amazing. If not, pretty much trade bait. 48 overall, low top six. At pick number 223, apologies, a little issue with the recording, so I took a timeout just to make sure I fixed things here. Uh, I, we took Barry Bell here at 223, 56 overall, low top 4D. 20 years old, yes, but the potential is there, so hopefully it turns into something of trade value, whatever, down the road. And something else I noticed, good thing, that's why I take the notes. That's why I have my notes here. I wasn't looking down at them, but good thing now here at pick number uh, 224, before we make our final selection, we want to make sure that we trade for the rights to Evan Bouchard. 
Bouchard. We were thinking about doing that. I didn't touch on it too, too much. I should probably break it down just a tad more. But the Oilers are going to be a little strapped for cash at the deadline. And they do have Evan Bouchard on the trade block, as, along with a bunch of other players. There are some very good players on the block right now. Maurice Sider, uh, Chikrin, Nurse. A lot of interesting names. I'm not sure if any fits the storyline as well as Bouchard, especially in EA land. Evan Bouchard, 89 overall, an expiring UFA who's coming off of a 67-point season. As an offensive defenseman, this guy's going to be wanting big, big, big free agent dollars. We have some cap space, and we have an open slot at right D number one. If we're going to continue with Hannafin and Hronik as our second pair, not necessarily bringing in youth, but a younger player in 29-year-old Evan Bouchard. I know he's looked like he's a father of three since he's 17, but if we can bring in Evan Bouchard here to potentially be our first pair D right on the right side with Quinn Hughes, try and jumpstart his offense as well. Even two offensive defensemen doesn't help the chemistry. I don't know. We can play around with things. I think bringing in Evan Bouchard for the right side D would be best case scenario. If, uh, you know, the free agent class didn't look that great aside from Heiskanen on the defense. So especially for that right side, Evan Bouchard could be a big help. And the Oilers, it looks like they're going to be letting him walk to free agency anyways because they don't have the money with all their ex other expiring UFAs. So we could, yeah, we'll probably dip into next year's picks here. He does have a little bit of value still. We could use that fourth we just got from Minnesota. A fourth, yeah, I wouldn't get it done, but it wouldn't take a ton. A fourth, would it, actually, would a third just straight up get it done? A third, I don't think so, eh? No. Maybe we go third and a fourth then? Third and a fourth from Minnesota? This could this could do it. Third and a fourth? Yeah, all right, that's fair. Thank you, Edmonton. A third and a fourth for the UFA rights of a player who's going to want a lot of money, so it won't be easy. I was looking at Nugent Hopkins. A few people said maybe we give him a one or two year kind of thing. The reason why I'm kind of staying away from Nugent Hopkins, nothing to do with the player. I think we could find a way to fit him into the lineup. I'd rather have him than Caden O'Brien, for example. But I think it comes down to the storyline a little bit here. There you go. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, he's 36 years old, expiring UFA on a really cheap you know, discount deal of 5.125 million. He just had an 82 point season, three years, four, five, six, seven. Look at it, point per game plus, 80s, 90s, 100s, 50, uh, 95, all incredible seasons. He's gonna want like a two, three year thing of big, big dollars. Could we, in theory, do that? Yes. But if we're giving big dollars to Bouchard, we want to think about other free agents. We have extensions to Ratu, soon to tip it. I don't know if I want to tie up like seven, eight-ish million, and that's if we're getting a discount on a player who's going to be 36, maybe even going down in overall. So the idea of a top six forward is okay in my mind, but Nugent Hopkins, eh, it would probably be detrimental in terms of our long-term success for the dollar value that he'll want as his overall continues to go down. Was that, were those point totals just from playing with McDavid, Dreisaitl? I don't know. So that's it. That's all for the trades. With the final selection now at 224, we can go ahead and take, who was that we wanted? Ackerland, right. Johan Ackerland from Kuku Quavola, 19 year old, low top 4D, and he is 53 overall, I think I saw. Good. So, quite a draft, ladies and gentlemen. A cr incredible grab to get Lundqvist at number three. Cost a lot, but I think he'll be worth it. Quint at 29. He's kind of an experiment guy. We'll see what happens. Baikov and Zubov, the two medium league goalies. Alto, great steal in my opinion. Montoya, solid pick as well. Even Kravchenko and Valet, Baribal, and Akerlund kind of as the potential guys who maybe they become something. Maybe they're just trade value. Who knows? But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think there's anything else we really had to do with that draft. I don't think I was forgetting anyone else we wanted to trade for. Maybe we were thinking about Sveshkov and things like that. But now that we added Lundqvist to the team, that does kind of change the top six, top nine moving forward. So let's figure out what go what's going on now. A lot of scouts to resign. Uh, okay, blah, blah, blah. Let's figure out what we can do in the resign phase. And those bigger decisions can be made on July 1st. So uh, first and foremost, I want to see what does Evan Bouchard want here in free agency. He wants four years at 11.8. Yeah, it's going to cost to get him. It's not going to be cheap. You might be saying it's too much, but you got to keep in consideration the EA offensive defenseman tax. OFDs in franchise mode just want a ton of money. And speaking of the top six, we didn't really touch upon Josh Norris. He grew from an 85 to an 87, so I'm okay with giving him a chance. But I did see names on the block like Carter Verhage. We thought we were thinking about Ryan Nugent Hopkins. So if Norris isn't picking it up by the half waypoint so in a couple episodes from now he'd likely be a trade candidate but if he can keep his 87 overall status i'd be okay with trying him out as second line center for next season i didn't really touch on that too too much so evan bouchard if we go 85 percent uh he only he want i probably think that he wants more if i was trying to create the storyline but he says he wants four years 
if we can get them down to 85%, that's 10.03. So like, let's say 10.05 for four years, like four years, just over 40 million. 10.05 on Evan Bouchard. Uh, he does want the extension. So let's see what happens. Evan Bouchard, four by 10 type of thing. We'll see. Going to the rest of the UFAs here. Okay, let me just clean up a little bit of who we're not resigning, who's getting released, like Zuccarello and you know whoever else. I'll go resign some of the scouts and then we'll get into the actual negotiations. All right, that's all taken care of. So let's get back into the re-signing now. We're playing with about 35 million. So if Bouchard does sign on for about 10, we still have about 25 to play with, including the OEL buyout that's still getting us down there at 2.127. So let's just look at the UFAs here for a moment. Bouchard, yes, we definitely want Pat Colson to come back. Uh, reasonable contract demand? Yeah, three years at 2.075. Yep. I would probably play around with the years a little bit, but he wants three, so I'll give him three. 1.76 is 85%, so let's go 1.8. Three years at 1.8 for Pat Colson. Solid, solid, solid bottom six. Even sometimes middle six guy for us in the postseason, that is. Aku Ratu, we gotta keep the Ratu brothers together. Eh, he wants 1.2, though. Uh, Ratu, you know what? We're gonna drop Ratu, and we'll see you in free agency. I'll add that to my notes. But he's so guys after the AHL. I'm actually gonna release you as well. We'll we'll see which how many of our prospects make up the AHL team, then how many players we need to sign to kind of supplement. Jared McIsaac, what do you want to stay a seventh D? You want another one year, eh? 1.075, 85%. So let's go 1.075 on McIsaac. See what he says. Again, he's a 78 overall. He's done well though. But one year, 1.075 on McIsaac. All these other um, these prospects who need to be signed have received their uh, entry-level contract offers. RFAs now. Aturatu, I think we're ready to sign him on for his big boy contract. Yeah, he's an expiring UFA now. So we got pretty lucky with a couple of good bridge deals. He's 26 now. He's been a top six guy for us. I think it's time to pay the man. I don't know if I want to lock him in at this value. because I think even he thinks he could be worth a bit more. That's why he wants the four years. Let's try to push for five. I was thinking maybe six or seven. Let's try to push for five. Five, kind of like a five by five kind of thing. We had spoken about Ratu and how he's been a first line 88 overall guy, but it seems as though he's kind of settling as a second line 85, 86 overall guy, and that's okay. And that would mean five by five is pretty fair. 85% would be 4.44, but I don't want to go into the fours. I think Ratu is better than that. I'd almost pay him a little bit more than this, but I think five by five is fair enough because he's still kind of an up and down overall guy. Five by five seems pretty fair to me, but the salary cap is up to 99 million, which in today's NHL would be like 4.2 million. So would you sign a second line guy putting up 50, 60 points to 4.2 million? Probably not. I know for five by five, people are probably screaming, do the five by five, but something in my heart is telling me I gotta pay this man a little bit more. He wants five years at 5.225. I'm giving him five years at 5.250 uh, and say, let's just have a clear conscience on that. Five years at 5.25 for a guy who's a consistent 60 point player. Let's do it, which in today's NHL is like paying about four and a half million, probably still even a bit low for my conscience, but I think that's better. Now, Jonathan LeCaramacchi, he's coming off of a career year, 27 goals. We could do one more year at RFA for LeCaramacchi, but I think you give bridges to guys that you want to see if they can prove themselves. I think LeCaramacchi, he hasn't proven himself as a first line guy just yet, no, but he has proven himself as a guy that we want to have on this team as a second liner, as a third liner, I don't know what it is, middle six, top six. So I'm okay with giving him kind of like a five year deal as well, which would still allow him the out to unrestricted free agency when he's 30. We could do the one year on him at 3.5. Four, but then if he has a really good year on the top line or something with, you know, bringing Lungfist, whoever else, he's going to be wanting five, six plus. So we could lock him in now for like five by four point something, putting him on that same kind of timeline as Ratu. So five years, I don't know, he just scored 27 goals, 50 some points, 52 points. But again, his career hasn't shown enough for me to give him much, you know, I know he could be worth more, but that's the risk that we're taking to be signing him to a five-year deal. Then if he proves himself in those five seasons, then he can get his big boy contract. But I don't think it would make sense to just give him a one, two-year type of thing. We'll pay him more than he would sign for. He would sign for 3.7. I'll give him a five by four, $20 million, and we'll see where he goes from there. If he's a top six, middle six, 50-point guy, okay, I'll go 4.25. I know I'm not usually one to overpay. Usually I want to play the system because the contract demands are ridiculous. But I don't find the Ratu and El Karamaki are asking for enough. 
So five by 4.25, not for what he's worth today, but what I think he could be worth in a two, three seasons from now, if he's gonna be first line right wing with all of the flying Swedes. So let's try that five by 4.25. I know we could do one year, but I don't wanna miss out on the opportunity to lock him into an affordable AAV now, which is definitely making him happy today, maybe unhappy later, but we're the ones who are taking the risk. If he's just a third liner putting up 45 points, then we're the ones who are stuck. So, Klimovich, Brustovic, Kudryavtsev, Maggio, all these guys, I'll, yeah, I'll probably sign them for the AHL. We'll see who ends up playing, who can, ends up getting traded or what. Uh, Casey DeSmith now would be the one we have to think about. Casey DeSmith, he has been incredible. Probably a Data 72 Hall of Fame nominee. I know his numbers got messed up a little bit last season, but he came to Vancouver. He got traded from Pittsburgh to Montreal in the Petrie deal. Never played for the Canadians. Got flipped to the Canucks. Started off as their backup. Never was our official like 1A, but we definitely played him as a starter for a couple seasons. In the playoffs, he was incredible as well through his starts with us. He has his Stanley Cup ring very well earned and well deserved. If we look at his total stats just as a Vancouver Canuck, he had 128 appearances appearances going 60, 46, and 7. He had four shutouts, a 913 save percentage, and 2.79 goals against average. Minus last season, his save percentage I believe was 917, and his goals against average was in the 2.6s. So last season did mess it up a little bit, but still for a guy who was never higher than an 81 overall and was always playing in his 30s, incredible. And in the playoffs, minus the one start he had in Pittsburgh through 37, 36 appearances with Vancouver over three postseason runs two pretty much as starter he went 22 10 and 4 with three shutouts about a 920 save percentage and something around a 2.65 goals against average you would think so Casey Smith thank you for everything here in Vancouver my friend I wish I could trade you to a contender but I gotta let you go into free agency I hope that the free agent market is good to you I hope that you find something that is going to get you another run at Lord Stanley and we look forward to seeing you down the road thank you for everything here in Vancouver and for this series one of the players who was here when we took over possibly a Dana 72 Hall of Fame nominee in the future King Casey the Smith leaves his throne. So does Oscar Janssen become our, our backup next season? Second round pick in 2026. He was, I think he was like a, was he almost, was he already a 75 or close to a 75? He hasn't really grown since then. He was a 70 some overall with medium fringe starter potential. And you know, he's been, he came over to the AHL and all that, but hasn't really grown much in overall. So again, off season growth, hopefully from him. So let's advance a day and see what happens. We'll definitely want to sign um, Lungfist as well. Evan Bouchard does not like the money, so we'll try that again. Uh, same for Pickles. He didn't like the minutes he played last season. Okay. Ratu likes it. McIsaac doesn't. Brown, Beaulieu, Cook, LeCare, Mackey on board. Good. Walter, Fritz, Meyer, Markstrom. Okay. So back to the UFAs. Just Bouchard, Pickles, and McIsaac, of course. So, for Bouchard, we don't want to play around too, too much, but let's try and see what he would really be willing to take. Let's go to four years at 10.25 and see if he likes that a little bit more. For Pudkolzin, I'm okay with giving you your three years, but hold on, you want two million? Did he always want two million? Yeah, I think I did. I think I'm just misremembering. I think we had offered him, what, 1.8? So, boof. Maybe I give him one year instead. One year at 1.875. We'll re-sign you again next year. Hopefully, better luck next year for us. Let's see if Pudkolzin likes that. And for McIsaac, come on, buddy, you got to work with me here. I'll give you your two years, but let's bring it down to 1.1. Come on, buddy. Come on now. Advance another day. Some of the scouts are going to sign on now. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, Bouchard wants more money, but Colson wants more minutes, and McIsaac wants more money, of course. Let's go four years at 10.75 then. That's up at 500k. Can you do something nice with 500k, Evan? Can you find something nice? Nice little uh, addition to the house, maybe? Put Coles in. I'm going to give you one year at exactly what you're asking. No, i got to go one year, two million, because you're upset with your minutes. One year, two million on Put Coles in. Hopefully, we can get him for a little cheaper next year. And Jared McIsaac, come on, buddy. You're a good story. I'm trying to work with you here. Two years, 1.2. More scouts. Come on now. Let's go. Bouchard, easy decision. All right. Four years at 10.75 on Evan Bouchard. Lovely. That would have been much more costly in free agency. So we trade for his rights. We get it done. But Colson wants more minutes and McIsaac's on board. Of course, easy decision. Of course it was. After Put Colson, we should still have like 14 million to play with. So, uh, yeah, we have a lot of money. One year, 2.25 on Put Colson then. I know. It's okay. Your AI brain is being taken. It's okay. It's okay. I, I hold nothing against you. It's your AI brain being controlled. I understand. We still have over 15 million to 
to play with, ladies and gentlemen. All we pretty much need is a goaltender, maybe a depth defenseman. One, two, three, four, then five, six. Yeah, so Bouillon is going to be on the third pair. We'll sign him because we want him to be playing on the third pair next year. Well, we can always do it once he grows. But we'll want to get Bouillon onto the third pair, and the question will be, who does he play with? So third pair defenseman, backup goalie, and for the forwards, I don't know, because the forwards are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, probably with Lundqvist. 9, 10, 11, 12. There you go. Niska is going to come in. Klimovich, fourth line center. That's not even considering potential growth from Brown or Johnston. I think the forwards are set if we're keeping everybody. If we end up saying, okay, let's trade Richie and or O'Brien, well, then we could look at bringing in someone else. So either we sign someone in free agency and figure it out in September, or we bank on some growth. A few ways we can think about it. Totally forgot about the RFAs. So let me just take care of these RFAs. Presto changeo, there you go. That should be everyone for all expiring. Very good. Uh, do we sign Lundqvist now? Well, there's no rush. Lundqvist and Bouillon. No need to rush a contract now. We know that they'll both be on the team. Let's just advance to free agency and see what happens. So a couple more days. Kilovic, easy decision. Brusevich, Kudvyatsev, the other Elias Pedersen. Very good. Here we now are at July 1st. Before we look at free agency, I'm just going to quickly dip into the higher staff pool. I know that I'll be looking at scouts and things like that. But for the coaches, we see a few A-plus guys. Our good, friend, uh, our good friends, Galina and Ramirez. If we could get an A-plus guy, to be a, the associate coach, that would be great. The biggest problem would be the fit, really, because we don't know exactly what our fit would be. 62, 52, 52. So maybe Braden Kapusta? He loves Pedersen on the first line. So let's see if we can get Braden Kapusta to be our head coach, quote, head coach. But we're going to go ahead and make him the uh, the associate, actually. Basically, our plan B, if it doesn't work out with Ryan Suter. So, Kapusta, you seem to have a decent enough fit. I'm going to offer you the contra the uh, the offer of being our associate coach, uh, even though we got to play musical chairs and always play games with each other. So, Ronick will end up being fired here, unless we keep him as associate. Uh, but, uh, I don't know. Would the game say, oh, you're over for the salary cap and all that? Chance Ronick. Uh, because I don't have to fire low. Actually, this guy, Siegel, doesn't have a good... He's not very happy. He's not very happy. Mike Siegel's not too happy. So, you know what? Let's fire Mike Siegel. Mikey, you're out of there. Ronick down to assistant coach. Suter to associate. And then back up to interim head coach. And then we'll wait and see what happens on uh, the guy we just sent an offer to. Okay. I'll also just take care of some uh, scouts quickly. Give me a second. All right, just one contract sent out to a scout. Now let's see the free agent pool for 2029. And Miro Heiskanen is indeed there. Wow. Dallas is like, I just checked them out earlier. I, they're below the salary cap right now. They're they're like, this. I think they have 68 million. So that's crazy. Just UFAs, UFAs. Wow. But now, if we were to go after Heisen, let's say we, we banked on him dropping to free agency and we didn't go after Bouchard, we'd have to be offering him seven years at like 13.5 plus. And I don't know if his product yeah, his production's there. It's there. Not, but you know, maybe Bouchard was a one-off type of thing. I don't know. Hopefully he can sustain it long term. But Heiskanen has the X factors. He can play lefty, righty. He's 91 overall. But he would have costed maybe three, you know, two and a bit million more for seven years. That's the tough part. So maybe it would still worked out actually that we went after uh, Bouchard. I gotta say, Shveshkov also interests me. We're talking a little bit about Shveshkov in the Discord server in the comments. He is a Predators prospect who was drafted 19th overall in 2021, I think, but he's not in the game, so I had to create him. He's looking very good defensively, two-way forward with four and a half star defense, 88 on the face-offs. He'd be a great second line center over Josh Norris, but the question is, do we want to roll with him? He was doing well in Nashville, but then he went to LA and he scored only three points in 18 games as a negative five. So 49 and 61 before that, he was on pace for a career year and then one goal three points in 18 games yes his ice time went way down to 12 29 do we try and save him now second line kind of guy he does really interest me as a solid two-way guy he would be mr penalty kill for us geeky Dursey, evangelista a lot of their names for what we were talking about backup goalie and a third pair of defense probably a right d third pair guy there's a lot of different options down here i'll take a closer look in a moment so i even risto's back we could go after risto again but now he's 34 so i don't know and for backup goalie market, yeah, there's a lot of decent guys we could think about here. Zarenko, even Jack Campbell looking for a little redemption story. That could be something. Yeah, so that is okay. But when it comes to who we could sign as free agents, we have 15 million. And I got to do a little bit of some closer research here. 
It's a tough call. It's a tough call. Also, it's July 1st. We can start thinking about maybe potential extensions. I don't know if we want to do any now. I have to look at expiring players. Norris, Tippett, O'Brien. We would have 27.7 to play with. Norris wants six point, yeah, and the six millions for the next few years. Owen Tippett would be wanting an increase into the six millions as well. We could do five by six on Owen Tippett. He wants five years at 6.5. He's making 4.6 right now. He's proven himself pretty well. And again, another guy who, if we're going to play him as a top line player, he might end up you know, exploding offensively and want way more if we give him a couple seasons. 60 point year with a so so team playing 1947 of ice time, yes, but with a so so team, not the greatest possible line mates. I think he can be a consistent 60 point guy long term. And if we want him to be first line right wing or just top six right wing, if Le Karamaki's number one, he's number two, whatever it is, I think five by six is pretty fair for a guy who's proved himself the last few seasons. So we could potentially wait on him, but I don't know. He had a solid season. Maybe he goes up to an 86. He wants a bit more. 85% would bring him down to about 5.5 million. But I think 5 by five by 6 is pretty fair. Again, especially considering that the salary cap is 99 million. 5 by 6 in 2029 is essentially 5 by like 5, 5.1 in today's NHL. So for a consistent 60 point guy to get paid five or 5.1, that'd be a good deal. So I think that five by six is fair, especially when you're taking into consideration that the salary cap is almost a hundred million. So five by six and Owen Tippett, let's see what he says to that, to be a long-term top six guy for us on this team. Josh Norris, even O'Brien, put calls in, we're definitely gonna be waiting on them and nobody else that we have to think about really too much right now. But yeah, back to the free agents. If we brought in a guy like Shveshkov to play in the top six, Pedersen, Norris, Ratu, Tippett, Lekaramaki, and I would think probably Lundqvist, that would be my top six. Then my third line is O'Brien, Podkolzin, and probably Goldman. I don't know where Richie fits, even if he does see growth. And then the fourth line, Klimovich, Niskala, and Johnston maybe. But the top six is pretty much spoken for. And even if you put Lundqvist down on the third line for his rookie season... On the second line, you'd be bringing up somebody else because unless you're pushing put Colson down to the fourth, someone would have to move off that third line of O'Brien, put Colson, Richie Goldman, whoever. So I mean, put Colson or whoever goes down to the fourth line, Lundqvist goes down to the third line, and Shveshkov comes in. So even then, I don't know if I like that very much either. I think Lundqvist probably would be like a second line guy, and I think our top six probably would be these five plus him. I don't know if it would make much sense to ship out Josh Norris quite yet. I don't know. We just got him. Musty's one thing. Norris, we just got him. He probably had some sort of trade clause, something modified somewhere in there as well. The Discord server seemed to agree that we should give him at least half a season. It's just tough and we don't know if our prospects are going to see any growth. And don't forget his point totals when he moved off of the fourth line. We had him pretty much playing fourth line minutes so that Richie Goldman could get more ice time. His 28 points in 52 games, half of those were when he was playing fourth line minutes. So keep that in mind. When he played second line minutes and uh, second unit power play, I think, yeah, that's with 11.46. When he played more minutes, he was scoring at a much higher pace. So if it ends up being the case that Josh Norris isn't working out and we want to trade him, that's one thing. But when he's given the minutes, he's performed. He'd be open to an extension. He's up to an 87 overall. We need a second line center I'd say it seems as though we'd probably keep him worst case we trade him later on but to trade him out now for a total unknown who we haven't seen simulate just yet in this team we don't know the team fit and anything like that that's also risky in and of itself so I think we're gonna stay away from a top six forward as tempting as it would be to go after some of these names in the UFA market Shveshkov especially only wants two years of 5.775 but he is more that two-way guy and we need top six scoring. He has been a 30, 40 point guy. He just came off a career high of like 50 some points when he's getting like first line minutes. I don't know. He seems to be more of a two-way guy, which is great. That's fine. But he'd probably be more of a third line fit as an 86 overall. That's why he's listed as a third line scoring forward. Maybe he could be. So now I'm kind of shifting gears. I've kind of closed the door to Shveshkov as a top six forward, but what about as a top nine forward? If our third line as of now is O'Brien, uh, let's say maybe Goldman and Podkolzin, maybe we could push Podkolzin down. As much as we want to do right by him and we love Podkolzin, maybe it would be the better thing to say, let's get a stronger defensive third line, especially if we're having some younger pieces there and Shveshkov plays third line minutes. He doesn't want a long-term deal. That's what would scare me for someone else who wants five, six, seven years. But if Shveshkov wants two years and a prove it to me kind of deal, my thinking is, you know what? Even one year, he wants 4.775. 
So here's the thing, we're gonna let Destiny decide this one. I'm gonna go one year on Shveshkov. If he ends up being great and he costs us six million moving forward, then so be it. But I don't wanna lock myself into a long-term deal and I don't know what's gonna happen with the future of this team just yet. I'm gonna say, hey, Shveshkov, I'm gonna give you one year, five million, that's it. It's above what he's asking for for one year, but it's below what he's asking for for two years. So if another team swoops in and takes him, that's okay with me. One year, five million, take it in a prove it to me kind of deal. He's coming off of three points in 18 games when he got traded at the deadline, so he needs to have a prove it to me kind of season before he gets his big payday. He's listed as a third line forward, so if we play him third line, that wouldn't be out of the question. So Shveshkov, let's do it, buddy. One year, five million. I hope that you come our way. If not, it wasn't meant to be. We still need that third pair of D and that uh, backup goalie. So uh, ideally it would be a right defenseman that we pick up here in free agency. I don't wanna be too, too picky. A couple of years would be solid. I don't think we have anyone really coming up in the system on the right side just yet. Someone who wants to, is listed as top six would also be preferable. So Lassie Thompson down, he wants a bit too much. Maybe a Justin Barron kind of guy plays right and left, right-handed, which is helpful. Three and a half star defense, 89 shot blocking, 88 stick checking, I like that. Uh, let's see, simulates well enough for the plus minus, even in the AHL though. And yeah, he hits and he blocks when given a, when given the ice time in the AHL. So Justin Barron, he's talking to me here. Yoki Hari wants three years, Labushkin. Zub would be interesting as well. Artem Zub, lower on the shot blocking, the stick checking. If I'm really focusing on those attributes, 89, 88, defensive awareness is okay, but it's more of a vanity thing. If I'm looking at shot blocking and stick checking primarily, 89, 88, 87, 87, 87, 87, 86, 86, 92, 89. Oh, I love Andrew Peak. If you heard my trade deadline coverage when he got traded and I was blowing up to the Blue Jackets hadn't gotten more, oh, I'm a big Andrew Peak fan. Does he simulate as well as those attributes look though? When he's getting 18 minutes, is he hitting and blocking? He is for 18 minutes. If I bring him down in the ice time a little bit, he should still be able to uh, do those numbers though. I think I'm gonna put some trust in Andrew Peak here. I'm a big fan of what he does in the real game, and I love that he has the four-star defense of a 92 shot blocking and 89 stick checking. We don't need offense from him, we need defense. He's a defensive defenseman, that's A-OK -okay with me. He'll play with Bouillon, give a little bit of stability there. He might cost a little bit more, maybe like 200K more. Uh, but if I say, listen, I wanna go two years, I really wanna go two years, unless I do give him the three years, but then I go down a little bit. Instead of two years at like three million, let's go three years, at like, let's do 2.5. It's above 85%. Uh, let's even go to 2.55. Three years at 2.55, another kind of deal of, if it's meant to be, it'll happen. Two years at 3 million. I don't know, I'm gonna want that money next season when it comes to potential extensions for Norris. We're gonna have money going to La Caramaki, to Tippett, to Ratu. I'd prefer to, you know, 500K may not break the bank, but I'd prefer to keep it open. So three years at 2.55. Let's see what Andrew Peake says about that to be our third pair right D up until, you know, probably his last big contract, giving him a little bit more security on a good team as opposed to two years and he's getting league minimum after that maybe. So there's third pair right D hopefully. For the backup goalie now, for goalies who are listed as backups, uh, Jack Campbell. He could be a good reclamation story, but the numbers, the numbers aren't there. The numbers aren't there. It's been a while since he's had solid numbers, hovering around 900 save percentage as a backup the last three seasons. There's a reason why he's only asking for like league minimums. So Jack Campbell, I don't think we can do it. Schmid at 825K as well. How do the numbers look here for Akira Schmid? He's been with the Devils his entire career. 64, 62, and 16, 894 save percentage. Last year, 889, the year before, 908. A lot of years in the 800s. A lot of years in the 800s, eesh. Again, a reason why he's asking for the amount that he's asking for, but he's a big six foot five body. He's listed as a backup, that's helpful. I'll sort by UFAs, do a little research, and I'll get back with an answer. All right, so I did my research and for the backup goalie, it comes down to two names. Either Samuel Urson, who's 29, 81 overall, NHL backup last year, 13, 8, and 0, 917 save percentage, 2.64 goals against average. Before that, so-so numbers in the AHL. Or we go for the player who is younger, six years younger, one overall less, Ilya Leonov, who's yet to play in the NHL, third round pick of the Blackhawks in 2025, 908 save percentage with four shutouts last year in the AHL. So between two years in the AHL, both years above a 900 save 
save percentage, around 2.8 goals against average. Leonov, six years younger, one overall less, medium starter potential. Maybe he's not a guy long term for us, but he would have potential to grow 82, 83, who knows? So as well as Urson did last year as an NHL backup, Leonov was a good AHL starter, is younger, has the potential to grow a little bit more. So although I'm kind of leaning Urson in some ways, I'm leaning Leonov in others. So let's go ahead and do it. Leonov, you got the youth. Maybe he'll grow a little bit into something more. Plus, we can keep him as an RFA. That's also very valuable. If we sign him for two years at 1.225, let's give him exactly what he's asking for. And he'll be an expiring RFA, which has value in and of itself as well. So you know what? Now I lean Leonov even a little bit more after seeing that we could have him as an RFA. Never got his entry level. He never got qualified, I guess I should say. So Shveshkov for the third line. Peak for third pair D. Then you got Leonov as backup goalie. That's pretty much all we got to do here. Maybe like Lebedev for the AHL. Oleg Lebedev. Why not? Let's throw some players like that into the AHL. No, oh, he wants two years. I'll give you one year. Max two-way deal. If you take it, you take it. And that's pretty much it. Not much on the market this year, it looks like. So there are our potential moves. We sent out an extension offer. We sent out an offer to a scout, to a new associate coach. A lot to think about as we start advancing a few days now. So let's see what the answers will be to those, uh, okay, to those offers that we sent out. Kapusa's on board as head coach, very good. I'm hearing your staff chemistry is low. I was gonna say no, but I saw those millions and millions of dollars and I wanna be a solution to the issue. I accept. All right, great Kapusta. So what I wanna do with Kapusta is I'm gonna keep him as, quote, head coach to start the season, just because I wanna see what his fit is. If I take him out now, I'll never get to see his actual fit. So I'm gonna keep him to the start of the year just to see what his fit would be, then we'll put back as head coach. Emmanuel Lemaire, bienvenue. Welcome, another scout on board. McIsaac and uh, Hannafin for two seconds from Minnesota. Interesting. Let's keep advancing a couple days. Here we go. So Andrew Peak, not enough money. Understandable, but he hasn't signed with anybody else yet. So we still have a chance at Andrew Peak. So we can go back to him. Next, we see Lebedev on board. Very nice. Leonov's on board as backup goalie. Great. Okay, good. And you know what? I just remembered Akuratu. We need him for depth. Aku, get in here. While we pause, also go check out Andrew Peak again. Andrew Peak. Yeah, no one else sent him an offer yet, so that's good for us. Baron's also out there as well. So Peak, give me an answer soon, buddy, because if not, I'm going to Justin Baron. Okay, let's bring it down to two years then. And we'll do two years at 2.75, as opposed to three at 2.55. We'll do two at 2.75. All right, Andrew, let's see what you got there. And Aku, let's go find him. There you are, Aku. There you are. Now you want your nice league minimum two-way deal, huh? No problem. Welcome back. I probably should have given him two years, but whatever. One year, bring that Ratu brothers back together. All right, we're waiting on Shveshkov. We're waiting on, yeah, just pretty much Shveshkov right now for what's coming up next. Ryan Pollock going to the Edmonton Oilers with a third for Fabry and Fajmo. Big deal there. All right, trade alert. Let's see it. Easy decision to renew from Owen Tippett. Thank you very much. We'll get him onto a nice AAV. Shveshkov's going back to the Predators. All right. That, you know what? It makes sense as well. He was drafted by the Predators. He was traded at the deadline. Goes back to Nashville. They made a big push to get his services back. It was not meant to be, and that's okay. Shveshkov going back to the Predators, the team that just won the Stanley Cup. So it makes total sense. Predators just won the cup. He was playing big minutes with them before that he had gotten traded at the deadline. Makes a lot of sense. Too bad. It would have been nice to have him. But yeah, the story definitely lines up. I'll also go ahead right now and sign Lundqvist and Bulio since we know that they're going to be players we want to see in the NHL next season. So Lundqvist will give you the maxed ELC right there. Dream of mine to join the team. I'll not let you down. Thank you very much. And this is Maxim, right? Uh, Maxime Bouillon, yes, drafted 12th overall by the, well, we were gonna draft him and then because of a bunch of mumbo jumbo, it's as if we got him at 12. We traded for him from the Hurricanes right after he was drafted because it was really that we were gonna draft him. He's been playing down in the QMJHL, 47 points in 65 games last year, but he's a 77 overall. I wanna see him getting a chance at third pair next season. So I'll give you three years at 1 million for your ELC. He's on board, he won't let us down, thank you. All of these other unsigned players will likely wait on them, especially Quint. Quint, yeah, he'd be going back to Peterborough, so no need to try and rush him to the NHL since we can't play him in the AHL yet anyways. So now we're just waiting on Peak and Ratu. Then after that, we can think about other third line type decisions. Maybe even though Shveshkov didn't work out, there's someone at a cheap contract that we can say, hey, that would be interesting. Advancing another day. Come on, Andrew, there you go. I was extremely happy to accept your offer. I like the fact that I can take on a leadership role in your team based on my skills. All right, thanks, Andrew. Great, whatever makes you happy. Welcome to the third pair defense. You'll be giving Maxime Bouillon some help. Offensive defenseman and defensive defenseman. I like that combo. And Aku is back to play with his brother. Cash offer, most generous league minimum. There you go. 
Uh, no, thank you, Calgary. Okay, so that brings us to July 9th now, still with a very fair amount of cap space at just over 13 million. If you look at affordable forwards now, you start by overall. Looking at players who are listed as third line forwards, obviously, Hua wouldn't quite work out, I don't think, but there's some cheap AAVs down here for some 82, 83 overalls. Maybe a guy who could play third or fourth, more like an 81 would make sense for us. Kind of be like a guy who could switch in and out with put goals in or up for injuries. As opposed to like a real middle six guy, let's get more of a bottom six guy, an 81 kind of guy. Yeah, kind of like down here listed as depth or fourth line. This guy's Svensson, now he's going to be an RFA. Maybe like a Nick Paul, maybe a Pitlick. Let me do some more research as always. I've done my research and the name that makes the most sense to me would be Jake Neighbors. Jake Neighbors last year playing about 10 and a half minutes per night, scored 36 points with the St. Louis Blues. Former first round pick, played yeah, 10-11 last year. Listed as a fourth line forward, 26th overall selection in the 2020 draft. The defense isn't crazy, but I do like the 85 stick checking. It's hard to find someone who's good for shot blocking and could be have a little bit of a scoring touch as well. All these other guys down here in the 80s and 81s, Trenin, Bordelo, they have very little offense. Trenin, probably the closest one at... Uh, 24 points in 10 and a half minutes last season, but I'd prefer to go for neighbors. I like that he only wants one year, which is a boost as well. Really that prove it to me kind of thing. So he's leaving St. Louis for the first time. We're going to give him a one year offer. I'm going to give him one year at 2 million. He'll be a bottom six forward and we'll see what he can do on this Vancouver squad if he's open to it. So Jake neighbors, one year, 2 million to be in the bottom six. But who knows if it ends up that uh, Johnston or even Brown, or uh, even uh, if you look up in the main roster, or in uh, Niskala, any of these guys, if they're going to be pushing for neighbors to be moved out, well, then neighbors, maybe he becomes 13th forward and he's got a costly 13th forward. But we do have a lot of salary cap space to say that we can afford taking a little bit of a risk like that. So as we advance to next season, now the last couple things I want to do, I know I'm taking up a lot of time in this episode, but as always, we need to make sure that our draft class quality and generating prospect quality is randomized headed into next season. So randomizing a number now between 1 and 100, 0 to 20 being low, 21 to 79 being medium and 80 to 100 being high first for draft class quality randomizing i get 93 wow okay so high draft class quality take a screenshot of that okay and for generated prospect quality i get 18 i was wondering if that would happen yes okay the classic high low draft class so it's high draft class quality it should be a strong class but in terms of those high-end prospects at the beginning, it should be low. So probably not seeing any franchise guys, despite the high draft class quality, but maybe gems throughout. Probably picking up more potential type players as opposed to higher overall or just in general higher end prospects. But it'll be a high, low class headed into the 2030 draft for next season. So all that's done. Boys, take a rest. We've been resting a little bit with the extended time from the postseason. Take a rest. Enjoy. We've done what we need to do. We've sent out the contract that we're going to send out. I won't be bothering you this summer. Have some time at the cottage, on the lake. Do whatever you got to do. Train hard. Eat well, especially for those young players. Get ready to make a statement at training camp. Let's sim to next season and see what we're looking like to begin 2029-30. Man, I totally forgot even considering waiting for Jake Neighbors' uh, answer. But Jake Neighbors signs on. Extremely happy to accept the offer. I like the idea that I'm likely to be a go-to man for your team. So yes, confirmation, Jake Neighbors is indeed coming to Vancouver. Forgot to even consider that. I'm sorry, Jakey. Okay, so here at the beginning of the preseason, here is how our lines might be looking headed into year number seven. Not really any growth over the offseason, unfortunately. So let's quickly run through it. This is with that new A-rated or it was an A-plus rated head coach. So this is the fit right now, but it might be different with Ryan Suter back in. We can always change it back. We can play around with it. We'll figure that out in the comments. So Ratu, Pedersen, Lekaramaki as of now would be 85, 93, 83 with a plus three on the top line. Second line, Tippett, Norris, and Lundqvist in here with a plus two. Lundqvist still an 82 overall, but he should grow very quickly. Very, very quickly, I would think. Third line, O'Brien, Goldman, and Podkolzin with a plus two again. And fourth line, Niskala, Klimovich, and Neighbors. Klimovich, he's getting another chance into the NHL. He's been a trooper through this series so far. Former second round pick of the Canucks. Years one and two in the AHL. Year three, he was a full-time NHLer. Then years four, five, six back in the AHL. But he's back. He's signed on for this one last season. I think we're going to be giving Klimovich another chance here as fourth line center at a 79 overall. Niskala, I'd like him to get more ice time if possible. He has that top six potential. 
potential, but it's gonna be hard to find it unless maybe you put Coles and get swapped down. It would give a plus three on the second on the third line, excuse me. So that's also a possibility with this current coach. On defense, Hughes and Bouchard gets a plus one with this coach despite the bad fit because of the X factors. So hopefully that will jumpstart Quinn Hughes' offense, which has been lacking the last couple of years. Hannafin and Heronic, always that second pair. And Peak with Bouillon on the third pair. Maxime Bouillon is still a 77 overall. Usual franchise mode rationale would tell you keep Bouillon in the juniors and QMJ HL, let him grow until he's ready to really make your NHL team. But the thing is, with defense, we know how hard it is to get them to grow. We're always just trying to experiment. I say, hey, we gave him a, you know, we drafted him. We gave him another season in the, in the QMJHL. He was always a high overall, but he doesn't seem to be budging just yet. Let's really try our best to get him to grow. Let's give him third pair of minutes with Andrew Peak. I don't know. Maybe you disagree, but I'm going to say it for now. I want to throw him on third pair. Goaltending, Hunter Jones at an 85. And look at this. Leonov grew the one player to grow more than in like one overall, I suppose. From an 80 up to an 82. Ilya Leonov. Very good. So nice to see that growth. Even though like five hole and breakaway is low. Glove high, glove low in the mid 90s there. Very interesting. A bit of a wonky goalie prospect. Some 70s, some 90s. But we'll see what Ilya's got. 13th forward, Akura 2. And 7th D at the moment would be Jared McIsaac. Now, not in the lineup. Our players I sent down. Callum Ritchie, still an 81 overall. I think this is it for me him he's listed as a depth forward i'm thinking headed into the season when you have time to give a, a comment and we look at the trade blocks and see what's out there i think callum ritchie and even unfortunately dallas johnson two big trade bait pieces johnson's at a 76 overall low elite potential first round pick in 2025 just not growing he's 22 now and the growth is just not coming. We've given him his ice time in the AHL, back-to-back 40-some -back point years, with big ice time as well, 19, 18 minutes. It's just not really happening. Maybe another year would do it, but uh, I'm kind of saying it's time to cut it, cut Johnson loose. Even Gustavo Kelly, one year younger than Johnson, but five overall less. Gustavo Kelly, a low elite guy. He was another first round pick. Come on, Gustavo. A big guy that we want to get growth from though is Cody Brown. So that we're gonna look forward to seeing growth from him. Not much else going on in the AHL. Gotta uh, sign a couple forwards. Defense, I think we'd probably trade Brusevich at this point as well. Maybe even Kuduryatsev. We have players like Miknov and Shen with potential who needs to get the ice time. So I think we could be trading a few players out from our AHL squad. Lebedev, who was what, a 75? He grew to a 78. So with low elite potential, maybe he's gonna make the NHL sooner rather than later. His puck skills at five stars are what really bumps his overall up. But, you know, if he can develop all right, maybe he ends up being one of those guys. Goaltending, Oscar Janssen still 75 with medium fringe starter potential, backed up by Rainer Muller, who has 74, is a 74 overall with medium elite potential. So maybe Janssen comes up as third goalie and Muller gets to be full-time full -time AHL starter. I don't know, because we also need Cook and Markstrom as defensemen to make the, uh, the uh, defense. So we have to trade a couple out. Yeah, so we'll definitely be making some AHL changes, some AHL trades. Guys like Richie probably out, Johnston. Maybe we get some other AHL players who we are a bit higher on, or just draft picks and we sign players from free agency or what. And by the way, if we look in the system, Quint is still here at a 76 overall. He did not grow. Any other thoughts on uh, the extensions maybe into next episode? Josh Norris wants like six by six. That would not happen at 30 years of age. Caden O'Brien wants one year at 2.5. Eight years at 3.6. So at least that tells you that the, the game thinks he might grow a little bit more. And aside from him, it'll just be Richie. And I think we're pretty much done on Richie here now. So that being said, what we can do to close off the episode, a very long off season. We can look at the trade blocks and also look at the coaching staff. So with Kapusta as head coach, we saw some decent chemistry and we see a 66% team fit. He doesn't like Hughes and Bouchard though. So that's something you got to consider. I know it's going to hurt chemistry a little bit, but unfortunately we have to do this. If we were to say, okay, low goes down to AHL goalie coach, Kapusta down to NHL goalie coach, Suter up to NHL head coach, he would have a 50, a 65% team fit. Loves Heronic, likes Hughes and Bouchard a lot more as well. And his chemistry with the lines being what they already were would be zero on the first line. Unless we swap with, even then, eh? Doesn't like Ratu there. Maybe if Lundqvist comes up, we can go plus, yeah, okay. Plus one on the second, plus two on the third, and then uh, nothing on the fourth. Defense would be plus five, plus three, plus one though. So the chemistry for the defense, especially the top pair, would be a lot better. So take that into consideration. I won't change uh, Kapusta back as head coach yet because I want to mess up more chemistry. But let me know your thoughts. Should it be Kapusta or should it be Suter as head coach headed into this next season?
I'll promote him back to associate coach just for now to keep him a little bit happier. I know it's going to affect the morale a little bit, but for the sake of the experiment, there you go. So Kapusta with the A+, plus, there you have it. Okay, trade blocks now. Sorting by trade value, not much here in Anaheim. Matt Dumba on an expiring contract. Coyotes have Spence at an 82. Raquel expiring deal, but 78 overall. Prospects here in Boston, Rita, Ladine, Nyquist. If you want to know more about any of these, just let me know in, in the Discord server or in the comments. I can get you a picture or tell you more about any prospects you might want to know more about. Buffalo, not as much. Owens, Yoensu, Calgary. This guy, Lindholm. Interesting. Hold on a second. Mikhail Lindholm, two-way D, four-star defense. Former second-round pick in 2024, 84 overall. What's he done in his career so far? Oh, like... Two full seasons in the NHL, negatives both years because Calgary wasn't that hot, I think. And he is currently an RFA because the Flames don't have the salary cap space to get him. So RFA on the trade block there in Lindholm. Keep that in mind. We'll check out free agency in a second after we're done the trade blocks. But okay, they're in Calgary. Carolina, ooh, interesting prospects in Carolina. Actually, a good number of them. Starting with uh, Ian Albert, who they just drafted. Ian Albert at eighth overall. I don't know if he'd make the, as much sense, but other players like Perrault, even Maloney. Perrault, a power forward with attributes like this. You got Maloney, who was a former first round pick as well. Rocky Connolly, Lars Lindback, Dwayne Klo, Jonas or Jonas Lowe, Corey Estrada, all, a lot of uh, like former first round picks in there. We're still going. Sven Markstrom, six foot five, Jonathan Couturier, Julius Mietnin, Philip Ellison. Okay, wow, a lot of prospects. Pretty much everybody in Carolina's system on the trade block. Chicago, a few names there. Neil Storp. Neil Storp, first round pick. Okay. Colorado, not much. Columbus, nothing too much. Dallas, Pinelli, Niederreiter. Da Detroit, uh, Maurice Sider on the block here. I had noticed him on the block at the draft. I didn't really explore too, too much because it would have been higher trade value than uh, Evan Bouchard. But the Red Wings are sellers. I don't know, maybe Sider's not happy. He's uh, still playing a lot of minutes, I would think. 28 points last season. He's eating big minutes in Detroit. I don't know if it would make a ton of sense. Who goes out? Who comes in? I don't know. But just to say, Maurice Sider on the block there from the Red Wings. Yamamoto, Glass, Jack Eye also there. In Edmonton, we see expiring deals for big names like Pollock, Chikrin, Nurse, even Bertuzzi out there. Some high value for roster players from the Oilers. Panthers have Verhege still on the block. We've been thinking about Verhege for a long, long time. If it doesn't work out with Josh Norris, I think Carter Verhege would be probably at the top of the list. 75 face-off, so he's not technically a centerman. I thought he was left-wing center, but not technically a centerman. He's been on the block for like a couple of years now. 76 points last season with Florida. If things don't go well with Josh Norris, he's probably at the top of our list right now, so keep him in mind. Florida Panthers looking to move him. Uh, Voros, meaningly tiny Voros, right? The, the enforcer, yeah. Tiny Voros on the block in Los Angeles. Minnesota, nothing too much. Montreal, another medium uh, elite RFA here. Stefan Markstrom, the first overall pick in 2025. Wow. So it wouldn't make as much sense to trade for the first overall pick who's an RFA after three seasons with the Canadians, but it would make sense to maybe try, try and take a contract from the Canadians so that they could sign him. But of course, they don't have any of their bad contracts on the block. They want to keep everybody, of course. Why trade Marino making $6 million or Pionk making $4.6 million? No. Why do that? Let's trade Markstrom away. So maybe we help out the Canadians with some sort of trade. I don't know. In Nashville, Barabanov is here. Shane Pinto. Devils, nobody. Islanders, Pelik, Bolzuk, and a few other names. The other Brustovich. Maybe we send uh, Hunter Brustovich here to play with Henry. Uh, are they related? I would think so. It's a rare enough name. Uh, New York Islanders, nothing. Senators, Sprong, Marchand, 41 years of age. Strom, Pitlick, Cunnan, and Manjapane. Flyers, York, New Hook on an expiring deal. Sanheim, Madden, a few other names there. The Penguins, nothing too special. Sharks, nothing too special. Kraken have Vince Dunn on the block. Wow, four years left at over 10 million. I don't know if it would make as much sense for Seattle, but just throwing it out there. St. Louis, Roy, Burakovsky, and Kapanen. I think at least two of those they just signed in for agency. Tampa Bay, nothing too much. Toronto, ooh, Delorier, who's this guy? René Delorier, wasn't he in our Sharks franchise? I think he was. Former first round pick. Okay. A few other names here. Yashin, medium top six. Uh, wow, in Vegas. DeBrusque, Barbashev, Geeky, Stevenson, Schmaltz, Kerfoot. Lots of names there in Vegas. Washington, Sandine, Fabro, and DeMello. And Winnipeg, Trennan, who just got signed, and a couple of the guys there. So nothing too, too crazy on the trade blocks. But we do notice a couple of the RFAs who are out there. If we look in free agency right now, there they are, Markstrom and Lindholm. What kind of contracts would they want? Lindholm wants four by six, but he would take one year at two point something.
something. I don't know if I want to cheese it, but just to take that into consideration. Same for Markstrom, I'm sure, right? What would he want for one year? Yeah, five million. So that would be really cheesing it to steal the first overall pick from Montreal. Uh, but it's crazy that they don't make the decisions. The AI doesn't do anything to rectify these problems. A lot of names in free agency we could go after for the AHL, so not a big deal. I'll make something happen there off camera probably. Once we figure out which of the AHL guys we're going to be dumping in some sort of trade, just like five of those guys to another team for like a fourth round pick or something, nothing too crazy. Oh, and speaking of our draft pick situation, if you want to trade for more picks, keep in mind we still have a boatload from the, uh, the, the selling off of last year. Well, actually, you know what? We just shortened it down a little bit. Yeah, that's true. We actually ended up using a lot of them in this past draft. All right, so we have one first, one second, two thirds, a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth. It costs a lot to get that third overall pick but that was great no picks uh, beyond the uh, this next year so i wouldn't mind getting some more picks in this high low draft class in 2030 as aside from our own picks we have no sevenths but a couple of thirds and if we were to trade those guys that i'd mentioned the johnstons and the richies of the world trade value looks like this so richie still has a fair amount of trade value if we put richie and we put johnston together with a couple other throw-in pieces maybe even like a second round pick from another team or even we package it with a third and get a first a few different ideas to think about so how about that for quite an offseason, ladies and gentlemen? It was a lengthy one, so I apologize for that. A big draft and lots of things we considered in the offseason. It was really unfortunate that we couldn't get Shveshkov, but the story really lined up for him to go back to Nashville, so it makes sense. I guess O'Brien's getting another chance here, and Lundqvist is joining our top six? I don't know. What would you need to see to say, okay, this player is in or this player is out? Like, Karamak, if you're going to be a top six future first liner here, I can't have you staying as an 83 overall. We need growth from Lekaramaki. So we want to maximize chemistry. That's why maybe we say Kapusta stays as head coach to maximize first line chemistry but at the same time that would hurt the defensive chemistry as Susan Bouchard would get a plus one instead of a plus five. Patterson needs some line mates as well the poor guy I don't know I don't know there's a lot of ways to think about it this team on paper doesn't give me the most confidence so how can we change that is it just a waiting game I'm looking forward to seeing what all of you have to say down here on the comments here on YouTube or over on the discord server link in the description as always we'd love to see you there leave a like if you enjoyed the off season, and of course Subscribe if you haven't already for all of our ongoing series here on the channel, including coming soon in just about a week from now, I think, MLB The Show 24 Franchise Mode. We'll be back to having live streams on Tuesday evenings, in addition to our live streams on Thursday evenings when we do our San Francisco Starfleet Expansion Franchise Mode here on NHL 24. So make sure to subscribe to be made aware of all of those uploads, as well as become a part of the team and assistant general manager as we look to get back to glory with the Vancouver Canucks. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch. I'm looking forward to reading all your thoughts and incorporating them into the next one as we head into 2029-30, year number seven.